The Retort Season 1 presents expert views on the BTWC and CWC and the issues they face. This project is the product of a collaboration between Professor Lijun Shang, Professor Malcolm Dando and Dr Brett Edwards. This initiative has been funded by the London Metropolitan University Rescaling Fund 2021, which was awarded to Professor Li Shang. We are grateful for this support. Hello and welcome to this series of talks on the subject of chemical, biological weapon disarmament and non-proliferation. In this series, we will be hearing from a wide range of experts as we look towards the two major review conferences which will be taking place in coming months. In each talk, you will hear from a respected expert who will outline key opportunities and challenges in making pragmatic and holistic progress on this issue globally. This project has been kindly supported by the London Metropolitan University. Hello, my name is Richard Guthrie and I've been working on issues around the control of weapons of mass destruction for four decades. For over half of that time I've had a particular focus on the control of chemical and biological weapons. In this podcast I'll be talking specifically about biological weapons and a significant intergovernmental conference that will be taking place at the end of this year, 2022. The Biological Weapons Convention is the key international instrument to prohibit biological weapons. Every five years there is a review conference which provides the opportunity for the state's parties to, the, to carry out a full review of the purposes and the provisions of the convention, taking into account relevant scientific and technological developments. The next three-week review conference is, has been delayed from 2021 because of the pandemic, and is now scheduled for November-December 2022 and will be held in Geneva. This will be the ninth review conference for the Biological Weapons Convention. With such an important meeting coming up, this podcast will examine some key questions. What are the issues around the control of biological weapons? What is the Biological Weapons Convention? What is going to happen at the review conference? And why does it matter? Starting with the first of these questions, our starting point has to include an understanding of what makes a biological weapon. In summary, biological weapons are essentially tools for deliberate disease. They are based on the disease-causing abilities of living things, either by actions of the living things themselves, or by poisonous substances known as toxins that the living things produce. Most of the things that can cause disease are microorganisms, such as bacteria and viruses. But the convention also covers things like snake venom or ricin, derived from castor beans. There are other episodes of this podcast series that will deal with particular aspects of biological and chemical weapons, so do look out for them. If we want to ban biological weapons, we need to have some kind of expectation that these things are out of the ordinary and have some mechanism to make acquiring them or even using them more difficult. This sort of thinking led to the agreement of the Biological Weapons Convention, which opened for signature in 1972, 50 years ago this year, and entered into force in 1975. This brings us to our second question. What is the Biological Weapons Convention? This international treaty prohibits biological weapons, which includes toxin weapons. It is sometimes also known as the Biological and Toxin Weapons Convention by people who want to make the toxins issue explicit. And so there are two abbreviations used by people, BWC and BTWC. There is some history behind the two short names, but both are easier than the formal name. The Convention on the Prohibition of the Development, Production and Stockpiling of Bacteriological, brackets, Biological, close brackets, and Toxin Weapons and on their Destruction. Much more of a mouthful. Membership of the Convention is 184 as of September 2022, with the most recent member being the Republic of Namibia, which deposited its instrument of accession to the BWC in London on the 25th of February this year. While this membership includes the vast majority of countries of the world, membership remains lower than for the comparable nuclear and chemical treaties. The basic provisions of the Biological Weapons Convention are relatively simple to summarise a prohibition on getting or keeping such weapons, an obligation not to help anyone else have them, a need to implement the provisions in national law, 
and to provide for peaceful uses of the life sciences. The prohibition on getting or keeping such weapons is in Article 1 of the Convention. The obligation not to help anyone else to have them is in Article 3. The need to implement the Convention in national law is in Article 4. And the need to provide for peaceful uses of the life sciences is in Article 10. Quite often the shorthand of Article 10 issues, for example, is used when particular aspects of the Convention are under discussion. The third question posed at the beginning is, or was, what is going to happen at the review conference? Review conferences are the most significant regular events on the BWC calendar. They are held every five years, although, as I said, the latest has been delayed because of the pandemic. The major output from a BWC review conference is a final document which in recent years has been in three parts. The first part is fairly uncontroversial as it simply contains procedural information, such as when the conference met, which countries attended, and who carried out certain roles. The next part is known as the final declaration, which is in two sections. The first section contains an overarching political statement known as the Solemn Declaration. This is followed by an article-by-article -article review of the Convention, which forms the second section of the second part. The third part of the final document contains decisions and recommendations of the conference, which includes any decisions on a future work programme to be carried out between review conferences, and the mandate for the Implementation Support Unit, or ISU, which is the currently three-person Secretariat for the Convention. The Solemn Declaration, the Article-by-Article -article Review, and the Decisions and Recommendations all contain aspects for which there are significant divergences of views, which can make agreeing the final document extremely challenging. Before any possible final document is discussed, there is considerable activity within the review conference as well as before it. It is important to note that review conferences are not standalone events. There has been an intersessional programme of work that has been running since the last review conference that includes five annual meetings of experts and meetings of states parties. There have also been many national and non-governmental activities. All of these provide inputs into the review conference. Moreover, the 9th BWC Review Conference was preceded by a preparatory committee, or PREPCOM, which met in two sessions, during December 2021 and April 2022. As well as deciding administrative arrangements for the Review Conference, the April PREPCOM also considered a number of substantive issues, although it had no mandate to reach conclusions. These additional days of substantive discussion have assisted consideration of key issues this year, although there are two challenges. One is that there has been quite a gap in time, meaning that some discussion may effectively have been forgotten by the time of the three-week review conference. The second is related to this, and is the danger of repetition of some discussion, rather than building upon what has already been considered. After its opening formalities, and perhaps a message from the UN Secretary-General, the conference itself will start with what is known as the general debate. This allows for an exchange of views on any subject within the Convention. This is a public session, and most countries that make statements also have them published on the official website of the conference. While many of the statements may seem repetitive, covering many of the same issues, they have a particular role within national processes. For many countries, a statement at an intergovernmental inter conference has to be approved by all of the departments it relates to. This prompts discussion within each of these governments on biological weapons issues. While I've referred to the BWC Review Conference as an intergovernmental meeting, it is worth noting that it is, it is a common error to consider the BWC as a treaty between governments. It is not. It is a treaty between states. The governments attending the review conference are the political authorities within each state at the time of the conference. Yet governments come and go, and a change of government in a state makes no difference to the obligations that state has undertaken under the BWC. There are a number of issues that will be discussed during the review conference. A selection are characterised here. 
Perhaps the most contentious issue of the last 20 years has been the question of whether there should be a verification system for the Convention. There had been negotiations for a protocol that would have added verification arrangements amongst other means to strengthen the Convention. These were brought to a halt in 2001 when the USA announced it could not support anything that might come out of them. It is worth noting that just a couple of months before this, a number of vocal, non-aligned countries had raised serious questions about the proposed text. This has often been glossed over in those countries' desire to focus blame for the failure of the negotiations on the US. Over the years, a number of delegations have expressed desires to start negotiations on new arrangements, with others suggesting this is not the time. Some complementary arrangements have been proposed, such as peer review and compliance assessment, which are intended to build greater confidence in compliance through transparency in effective national implementation. A counter-argument to these proposals is that they are a distraction from the creation of formal verification arrangements. A significant step in 2021 was a statement by US Under Secretary of State Bonnie Jenkins. She told the Meeting of States Parties, held at the end of 2021, that the review conference, and I quote, should establish a new expert working group to examine possible measures to strengthen implementation of the Convention, increase transparency and enhance assurance of compliance, unquote. This statement didn't use the term verification, but measures to, quote, enhance assurance of compliance, unquote, would include verification measures in all but name. While many analysts have concluded that the BWC can be enhanced through effective compliance measures, through a variety of methods, some of which are outside of the traditional declarations of materials and facilities used in other disarmament arrangements, there are others who contest this. The challenge with verification has always been how much is enough to ensure compliance. Access to peaceful uses of the life sciences is covered by Article 10 of the Convention, embodying a bargain that the renunciation of biological weapons and the control of the hostile uses of the life sciences should be implemented in such a way as to facilitate and promote the use of life sci the life sciences for peaceful purposes. The non-aligned states have long pushed for some form of mechanism to enhance implementation of Article 10, in particular, as well as some of the wider issues of cooperation and assistance, including capacity building. Such a mechanism has been resisted by other countries, and in particular some Western governments. One of the difficulties is understanding what full implementation of Article 10 might look like. The 7th BWC Review Conference in 2011 established the Cooperation and Assistance Database, which is often called the Article 10 Database, which is run by the Implementation Support Unit and maintains details of offers of assistance and requests for assistance. There has been much discussion about whether the Article 10 database and its operation could be improved. The ongoing rapid advances within the life sciences mean that the BWC operates within a rapidly changing scientific and technological context, which includes advances for peaceful uses as well as possible hostile uses. The need for the Convention to operate effectively within this constantly changing context has led to various proposals as to how some form of ongoing review of scientific and technological developments, often abbreviated to S&T development, might be carried out. This is probably the area which has seen the most progress since the last review conference in 2016. As well as the dedicated two-day meeting of experts in each year of the last intersessional work programme, a variety of seminars and workshops have been convened on relevant related issues in recent years. While most BWC delegations appear to be in favour of new S&T monitoring arrangements, there are still many details that would have to be agreed. The importance of national implementation under Article 4 of the Convention has been regularly highlighted. Many states' parties have incomplete domestic implementation measures, and there is wide recognition that there is much room for improvement. Moreover, S&T developments, as well as political developments, mean that regular reviews of national measures help keep them effective. Response to use of biological weapons falls within Article 7 of the Convention, 
which provides for assistance by states' parties if a state party is exposed to danger because of a breach of the Convention. As all countries would have difficulties in response to a serious biological attack, this is a topic that attracts attention from all delegations. There has been a proposal for the creation of an Article 7 database to complement the Article 10 database. This proposal was put to the 8th Review Conference in 2016, but the difficulties of green, reaching agreement on substantive issues meant that there was no further action on this matter. The current mandate for the Implementation Support Unit ends at this review conference. In renewing the mandate, the review conference is likely to also consider the scope of the work of the ISU and the level of staffing. The scope of work will be connected to whatever intersessional work programme is agreed. It is clear that there is extremely strong support for the continuation of the ISU. Nevertheless, there have been a range of views expressed about what the scope of the mandate for the ISU should be, with consequent in impacts on what the cost of running the ISU would be. With many governments having restrictions on additional expenditures for international bodies, there is likely to be considerable discussion on the future of the ISU and potentially some difficulties on reaching agreement of the, on the scope of the mandate. The scope will be tied in with the scope of any intersessional work programme that would run until the 10th Review Conference, likely to be held in 2027. Four intersessional processes have been held so far. There has been a hope expressed by many delegations that a more substantive work programme could emerge from this review conference. Hopes enhanced in particular in light of the Jenkins Statement. The past system of annual meetings of experts and meetings of states' parties has had a number of positive benefits. Nevertheless, there is a feeling from many delegates that much more could be done if there was a more substantive and more responsive intersessional programme. But what are the chances of reaching consensus? The current geopolitical context has considerable negative effects within the BWC. The invasion of Ukraine by Russia being currently the most prominent geopolitical event. There have been ongoing Russian allegations that the US has been funding biological research activities in Ukraine that are in breach of the con Convention. The US and Ukraine deny this. I don't know a serious researcher in this issue area that gives any credibility to the Russian allegations. But there is a lot of historical baggage in this area, not least because of the US allegations in 2002-2003 about mobile biological labs in Iraq that turned out to be spectacularly incorrect. In years to come, I suspect the current Russian allegations will be seen as as damaging to their credibility as the US allegations at the beginning of this century were to that country. In September 2022, there was a formal consultative meeting held behind closed doors, called for by Russia under Article 5 of the BWC to discuss their allegations. The meeting did not reach a conclusion. Although the meeting was private, many countries posted their contributions as official documents which were made public. The vast majority of countries that expressed a public opinion were not in support of the allegations. The fields of biological and chemical weapons are closely related, and there are divisions in the regime to control, to, to control chemical weapons, sparked by the use of chemical weapons in Syria and the ongoing disputes about whether that country's declaration under the Chemical Weapons Convention contains all of the information it is required to provide. There are also divisions about allegations of use of chemical weapons as assassination weapons or in use for attempted assassinations. Some of these divisions may spill over into the biological sphere. With such an atmosphere, it is hard to see how consensus on a substantive final document with a significant programme of work might be reached. This brings us to the last question. Why does it matter? The review conference matters because it is the most significant item on the regular BWC calendar. The review conference matters because the problem of biological weapons is not one that's going to gently fade into the background. It will remain of ongoing concern for decades to come. There is more, much more, to the review conference than just the negotiation of the final document. 
While that might be the key output from the review conference, there are other outcomes that result from the gathering together of so many key players in the field. The, these include learning lessons from the experiences of others implementing the convention and the mutual reinforcement of the need to implement the convention effectively. In 2016, the 8th BWC Review Conference was unable to reach agreement on a number of substantive issues. It was one country, Iran, that was holding out on a number of these substantive issues. That review conference was only able to adopt a minimalist final document that included no details of an intercessional work program, but did allow for a meeting of states parties to be held in late 2017 with delegated authority to take a decision on a work program. The 2017 meeting of states parties did agree on a work program, but a year of substantive work was lost. There could be further lost time if the review conference this year had to do something similar. The review conference also matters as it has to decide on the future of the Implementation Support Unit, the ISU. While there is extremely strong support for the continuation of the ISU, its mandate has always been adopted by consensus. In other words, by agreement of all the state's parties at the review conference. It therefore only takes one to block consensus. However, even a minimalist final document would be likely to include a continuation of the ISU. In conclusion, the Biological Weapons Convention matters. The review conference is a key moment in the calendar for the convention, but agreeing a final document is not the only role the review conference plays. Thank you for listening. If you have got this far, then you will probably find other podcasts in this series of interest. There are many fine analysts who are contributing their perspectives. If you are interested in how BWC meetings operate, I've been doing daily reports from BWC meetings since the 6th Review Conference in 2006. These are freely available. Just put Guthrie BWC Daily Reports into any internet search engine and you will find links to the pages that host them. Again, thank you for listening. I hope you found this podcast useful. Goodbye.